Well, that was such an amazing speech from our keynote speaker, Mr. Wesley Lowry, and now I'm joined by him via Zoom to do a little bit of a Q&A and talk about the plight and the blessing of being a young journalist. Wes, just, I know we're not supposed to ask people but their age, but if you could kind of give us a little bit about like how long you've been in this and how old you are. Sure, so I'm 30 and I've been, you know, I've been working in journalism my whole adulthood. You know, I worked for my middle school newspaper and my high school newspaper and my college newspaper. And so I've always kind of known that this is what I wanted to do um, and was really blessed that, you know, I had some clarity, was able to get a lot of training really young. I was able to start at a pretty high level. You know, my first jobs were at the Boston Globe and the LA Times. And, you know, I've spent my entire career basically as a young journalist um, in this game. You've done so much so young. Like, do you feel like there's always pressure to top what project you've done prior? Certainly. No, I feel that all the time. Um, and that's pressure that I'm largely putting on myself in a lot of ways. Um, but it, but I think that for me, it's always about the work, right? It's about trying to learn year in and year out. It's about um, adding new tools to my toolbox, right? And so there have been years in the past where I've said, I really want to work on my future writing. Um, there are years in the past where I say, I really want to break some more news. This year, for example, where I've done much more on camera work, you know, and it's like, I want to figure out how to do that and do that at high level. And, and always, you know, like I said, I think that the work I try to do very often is specifically work that's about telling our stories. And so if I've got these platforms and these opportunities, I'm always going to try to keep telling them, keep doing it. If people follow you or know your journey, as much um, praise as you've gotten, you've also gotten a ton of criticism. How do you deal with that kind of pressure coming that way? And how does it help you to press forward? Because I think especially at one point in time, even your parents were getting death threats. And I think that would almost cause me to throw in the towel just for the safety of my loved ones, not even myself. You know, I think that in some ways it was a blessing that I dealt with a lot of that very young. Um, it, it, not that it was enjoyable at all, but it was that I was able to learn some lessons. I think that what's always true as black journalists, especially black journalists who might cover issues of race or ethnicity or gender, um, that that people don't want to grapple with these difficult questions. And so there is a desire very often to kill the messenger. You know, it was really tough. I I was going through it with kind of these online attacks from these right wing uh, websites. And, you know, they published my parents' home address. I was getting threats. I was having to report stuff to the police. You know, none of that was fun um and i i really it, it really threw me for a loop but having come out the other side of that i'd say that i did learn a fair amount from those experiences the first for me it was important to learn to take myself a little less seriously and what i mean by that is you know i took clear i took the threats very seriously I called the cops and stuff right but what i mean by that is there is sometimes in journalism, because so much of what we do is about our public presentation, right? About how we're presenting ourselves, how we're showing up on social media, those types of things. It can be very, I think, especially for kind of our generation of people who came up in this, you need to be a brand, you need to watch what you post, you know, um, there can be sometimes a hyper obsession with that and a fear that comes with if, if the veil ever drops or anyone ever sees or understands. And, and I think for me, it's been really helpful, both personally and also even as a journalist, to be able to take myself a little less seriously, to let people see a little bit of me, but also to be able to be kind of a little more humble, a little more responsive, to be able to laugh, to not feel like I have to respond to every attack or, every, you know, like, all right, whatever, it's fine. Let the crazy person say the crazy thing, right? As opposed to a world previously where I very much felt like I've got to defend my brand and my honor and my reputation and my, you know, because very often what you end up doing when you engage in people who are leveling bad faith attacks is you're just boosting. More people are seeing what they're saying. More people understand it now. And, and, and reminding myself that, you know, no one, no one thinks about you as much as you think about you. It was very important to me to start to get to a place where I could kind of let stuff roll off my back. Touching on the 
the, I guess the myth that all journalists hear is that you have to be everything to everyone. You have to look good. You have to write well, you have to sound good. Like you have to do all these things that encompass your brand. And I think, and I don't know about you, I've seen a lot of my friends jump ship. I know a lot of friends who were sticking with the whole journalism thing, had bright futures and were like, screw it, I'm over it. How do you not get burnt out so quickly? There's a balancing act between the pressures we put on ourselves, the pressures we imagine being put on us and what are, what are actually there. I, I, you know, I got really good advice from a dear friend of mine once. And, and it's something I think about all the time, uh, about how for us in, in the work, in, in the field that we're in, it's got to be about the work. The rest of it's all noise. It's it's okay. It's it's great to do all the other things. I certainly am on social. I certainly respond to readers and viewers. But the most important thing, more important than anything else, is that I show up and do the work every day, and that, that I'm in and I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at the storytelling, better at the reporting, developing the sourcing. The rest of it all comes, and the rest of it's all secondary. As individuals, we have to be grounded and rooted. We have to know why we're here, what it is we want to be doing, and and that have that be the compass that directs us and helps us make our decisions. I think another thing you kind of touched on is, you know, unfortunately, when you're young, you are told the world is your oyster, but then you get into newsrooms and it's very um, hierarchical. Like you're you're very bottom of this totem pole when you come in, and there's this. Um, pressure on you that you have to prove yourself to to the old guard and, and to the top brass to show that you were worth the hire, that you're worth the you know couple of dollars you kicked toward us when we were in our first jobs. We prove our value and we prove our worth in our newsroom by the work that we do, uh, and and that's and and that's how you prove people wrong. It doesn't really matter what these losers in the next cubicle think about you or your work. Uh, they're, they're, not, they're not the hiring manager. I had all types of people. I can think back to jobs I had in Los Angeles and Boston, all types of people, uh, fellow reporters, people I worked with who thought that I was overrated or that I was just, you know, I just got this job because I was young and black. Um, or, you know, I, was, I only knew how social media worked. I couldn't really do the journalism and so on and so forth all right, that's, that's cool. And, and today I sit here with my Pulitzer Prize on my bookshelf and my paycheck from 60 Minutes. And I don't know where those people are. But I think a big part of it is using that energy, one, to try to focus on, all right, what are some of the fair critiques? What are places that are blind spots of mine? What are, how do I prove this thing wrong, right? Is, can my writing be a little bit better? Can I break more news? Can I, you know, uh, be aware of what those critiques are so that you can build more tools into your toolbox. But again, we gotta, we, we can't spend so much time in our own heads worried about what other people are thinking. It's got, we gotta, we gotta know what we do and what we wanna do and have that as be our moral compass. What parting words would you give to young Black journalists for what needs to happen from here out? Our voices are extremely important in these conversations. Our presence in these newsrooms is uh, extremely important. The perspectives we bring are extremely important. And that can, and, and as discouraged as we might get in the moment, we've got we've to keep it up. I, I think that second, it's always about the work. It's about the stories that we're telling. It's about the people whose lives we're changing and impacting. Everything else comes second. The IG followers come second. The promo billboards come second. The, everything else comes second. It's about the work. And if you can stay rooted in that work, um, it's going to be very helpful um, in, in terms of letting a lot of the other stuff roll off your back. And the third thing is that you got to know and you got to remember that black journalism is a family that the other people out here got you if i could help you if someone else can help, reach out none of us i don't know a single black journalist who got to where they are by themselves that there are layers and support systems and you know i lean on my my group chats of, of black journalists every day uh, that we are all going through something and experiencing something that's different than a lot of our colleagues, that we are minorities in, in a majority white space, often dealing with in markets with majority white leaderships, trying to tell stories of a small black minority. And that can be taxing, it can be difficult. And so you have to make sure to guard yourself as well, guard your energy, uh, guard your mental and, and psychological health. 
lean on those friends, those black journalists, those group chats, those, that, that's important. Um, disconnect. You don't all have to be online all day, every day. And I think that's huge. I think a lot of us forget that. Um, we don't have to respond to every little thing that happens. And, and remember and think about who you're doing this work for and why you're doing it. Why did you get into it? Right? All we've got is our own integrity, our own core, who we are, who we want to be. And, and um, we, can't let, we can't let ourselves compromise that no matter what, no matter what the incentives. And, and again, I, this is a time of tumult in our industry, of change and confusion, but let's take advantage of the chaos, right? Sometimes that can be a good thing in terms of finding our voice, finding, finding more power in our newsrooms, telling the stories you want to tell. And look, I bet in this game a little bit and I, and I already feel like, you know, it's time for me to step aside and, and let the next generation do some of this, right? That you all are the ones who are going to change this industry um, for the better. You already are. Uh, you're teaching us new technologies, new ways of communication. And so, um, like I said, don't be afraid to pick up that mantle and, and do that work. We want to thank you so much for spending the time uh, with us tonight, doing this Q&A for us. And um, of course, we look forward to seeing what you'll do next. Do you want to give the people your uh, social media handles, your work? That's how you have a whole book that we didn't even touch on. Um, if you want to give the people that so that they can keep up. Of course, I'm easy to find. I'm just at Wesley Lowry on every platform. So it'll be up on IG, Twitter, Facebook, all over the place.